Well, hopefully three things, but, um, oh, woo. Ooh, a bird's eye view. I, this is a, uh, yeah, this is kind of, kind of interesting because I have, uh, I have my laptop here and then the big TV here and the camera. So I got to try to look up to there, but I think I'm going to get my neck. So I'm going to change some views from time to time. But before we get into the class itself, um, I'm going to open up with a little, uh, little number for you if that's okay is that okay a little holiday music do i see I some? that's great all right let me change my view so i could see more people if i can catch somebody sleeping all right so i think if i'm on this view here i probably need to move off to the side while i'm playing so <clears throat> we'll open up with a little holiday music here for you and let's see what I got here. I had something that I put some setups to that I wanted to see how well it would work. Let's see. So, do, 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 do. Oh, that might be it. Oh, yes, here we go. Oh, you're up there. Thank you. Was that okay? Did it sound okay? All right. Was that good? Down just a tiny bit. It's a little loud, but it's good. It's a little loud? I'm nervous. I thought it was nice. You're I'm, always a little loud, I'm but that's okay. not that loud. I don't know why, what. what uh, was great. Okay. It was well, good. I'm going to try to accomplish three things today. <clears throat> so um, I don't know if I'll get through it all, but um, I'm going to make a goal of it. So I want to do three totally different things. The first thing I want to do um, is actually, I'm going to, I've done this a few times in the past in some of my workshops here in Tucson, and it seems to be always well received. Um, and then what I'm also going to do is I, we've done this throughout the month. We did it with uh, Jerome here a couple weeks ago. Um, I did it for the, I think I want to say the SD and Easy owners, that I thought it'd be fun to do it today as well. So what I want to ask you to do is in the chat, uh, type in a, a, a holiday or Christmas song, okay, and a song that you like, and I'll pick out two or three of them and give you some quick setup tips based on the song you give me. So if you say song XYZ, I'm going to go, okay, here's what I would do instantly to do that, okay? Um, so I want to kind of test my uh, on-the-spot abilities. Uh, by the way, the song that I just did, Winter Wonderland, if you're writing this down, um, I used a simple Frank and the Count uh, uh, style. Before I forget, and people usually ask, I used the Frank, the Frank and the Count style that you all have um, at a tempo of 115. And I, I only used a few different sounds on this one. The piano, I had a jazz guitar in another part of the song, a muted trumpet, and a saxophone. Now, if you asked what's the best order to do it, there is no best order. It's whatever you like. I will tell you this, though. 
Um, when I started off with the Frank and the Count style, I had the Orchestra Plus off. So instead of this, and all the full band, I had just this, and you'll notice it's just the drummer, the bass, and in this case, a guitar player playing in the background. All right, and then I played. And then in the second part of the song, I switched with the same setup in the background, the drum variation and the alto style, and what it does is it changes from this to this. Notice the change in the band. So I went to this part. And then I went back to the original setup. So that's just a real quick setup tip. Now, I am going to give you, some of you the opportunity to get those setups if you don't if you want to just get the setups. It's not as easy to do, um, but I'm going to I'm going to encourage you to try it out later. I keep looking at my laptop. I got to look up there. All right, so that's the setup that I did for Winter Wonderland. Another setup that works really nice with Winter Wonderland is um, a style that some of you are familiar with called Jingle Jangles. It's a totally different feel. So that one was kind of like a swinging, kind of a, you know, swinging jazzy version. Or you can do this. I don't know why I'm doing this. I just feel like the snow is coming down on me right now, I guess. And then you have to make that sound when you do that. Anyway, I won't go any further, but that's a great style to use. If you're using that and you want that exact same setups, so if you have the EX series or the EY, make sure you use Vintage Style Setup Zero. Um, and if you have, if there are any A series owners on, just the normal rhythm preset will work nicely with that. All right. So I know you guys are doing some chat there. Let me just take a quick peek. Um, so far, you're all picking songs that I don't know how to play. Boy, this is going to be a tough class, but I'll, I'll figure it out. <clears throat> um, okay, so what I'm going to do, part one to this, is going to be um, how many of you, show of hands, let me switch to view here so I can feel like I'm talking directly to you instead of off to the side. Okay. Okay. All right, so how many of you, show of hands, I've got you in my gallery view, um, ha are familiar with an organ called the Hammond organ? Wurlitzer? If you think back in time before really automatic organ chords and one finger chords, back in, you know, I want to say, don't quote me to this, but I want to say back in the 60s, uh, the 70s even, but I think maybe in the early 70s, uh, there started to be some automatic rhythms and what have you, and then the late 80s, it continued on, and then the late 80s, early 90s, it seemed like when the orchestrated backgrounds seemed to be much more like a live performance, more authentic, instead of the same sounds all the time. But if you go way back in time to the time of the organs when there were no rhythms, or maybe there were, maybe there were drum beats, okay, but... That's all they had. All they had was what's called the flute tabs, <clears throat> okay? These tongue tabs here. And, and the reason why I have this model here is because I don't have a marquee or an aria, and the, the tabs here on the high end, the top of the line models, they actually go a little further than two. So I'm going to bounce back and forth to show you some of this. But when you first power on an organ... Okay, and it's original power-up setting. Let me just push home. And I'll push reset here. Got to remember my volume. 
switch camera view so you can see both of these here. As you know, when you first turn on the organ, they all come up basically to the same uh, sound, if you will, that what they call the Sweet Lowry organ sound, and it's very pretty. Very pretty sound, and so forth over here as well. All right. Now, but years ago, <coughs> when organs were just organs, they tried to manipulate the use of these tabs to do other things. And so I'm going to show you a couple little tips. And this is like, this kind of a for fun of it. And when you think about an organ sound, they always come up with this, what they call the tremolo. You hear it wavering there? All right. And then if you add a sustain, it does this. Okay, so far so good. Now watch what happens as I hold down the chord. Now do you notice the shift in the sound? It now it sounds like a church organ sound, right? All right, but now I'm going to show you how you can do something like this. I'm going to turn my back and cover it up for a moment. Wasn't that pretty? Some pretty bell sounds, right? Did you know I was not using the bell button? You may ask, what did you use, Robert? No, someone has to actually unmute themselves to say, what did you do, Robert? 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 What did you do? Okay, so, well, okay calm down, relax. Say what? Calm down, relax. <laughs> I see it now. There you are up there. <clears throat> All right, this is really cool. It's just a fun little trick that I learned years ago, how uh, you can take these flute tabs and turn them to bell-like type sounds, all right? So here's what we do. I'm gonna put it back to the normal power, power up the organ from scratch, okay? So you power it up, it comes up sounding like, there we go, all right? Now the first thing we do is we turn off the tremolo. Now, Sean, are you typing some of this up for me? Oh, he had to take a phone call. I asked him to type this up as we go, and it's not going to be perfect now, and then he's going to email me that document, and then I'm going to clean it up and then post it, which I'll tell you how to get it later. But <clears throat> here's the 16 and 4, all right? Here's what we do. The first thing we do is we, you turn off the tremolo. Now, on this model here, it says Viber Trem Fast. On a lot of the flagship models, the Viber Trem Fast is over to the left side. Um, on the marquee and the Aria, I'm going to ask Sean or Joni if they know where it's at. It's somewhere on this side. Yes? That's exactly right. It's on that side. I'm exactly correct. It's on this side, the left side. Okay, so either here or here, there's going to be a button that simply says Vibra Trim, slow and fast. You want it in the off position. <clears throat> now, Lona, I see you sitting at the organ. Is it on the left wing over here, or is it where the flute tabs are? She's putting her thumb up on the left over here. Okay, so on this side over here. And what it'll do is it'll take this sound... Now, I'm going to hold it when I turn it off. Listen to it. I mean, it's a, there's no tremolo whatsoever. Now, this, isn't, this is not a bell sound. It, it, that's actually by turning that off or putting on a slow trim, uh, the slow setting, it'll give you more of a church organ type sound. So that's why I started to play. And you can take any flute tab from there and...
Now, I went over here because this has a one-foot flute setting. <clears throat> so if you want a nice, just a good old classic church organ sound that you want to use for some of those great holiday or Christmas songs, keep the 16-foot flute on, and then come up with any other combination, all right? And you'll get that type of setting right there. So you notice as I'm changing the tabs, they all sound pretty good. The secret to that is keeping the 16-foot flute on and then changing the other flutes. Any combination. Now watch this. Can you see the tabs over here? Let me just... I'm going to prove it to you. Okay. Here's a 16-foot flute. And here's all the other flutes. This one goes up to the one-foot flute, like all of the marquees and so forth. Now here's a 16, no tremolo. Now watch this. I'm just going to take my hands and randomly hit all the tabs, but not touch the 16. Now tell them, someone tell me to stop. Someone tell me to stop. Stop. Okay. Stop. So it's foolproof. You can't come up with a bad pipe organ, church organ sound. <clears throat> Plus, it'll look really impressive if you have anybody that's watching you or record yourself and go, watch me. And you, yeah, it's great. Now, now let's take it to the bell sound, okay? So in this case, for the bell sounds, six, I'm going to tell you the opposite. Don't keep the 16-foot flute on. In fact, take it off. And I'm going to start with the 8-foot flute. However, it's still not going to be a bell-like setting. It just sounds like a, just a smaller, softer pipe organ. All right, but here's the one little trick. Viber trim off, put on an eight foot flute, and then we're gonna try a couple other combinations. But add sustain, flute sustain. Okay, now right here on this model, right next to it, there's an upper flute sustain button, tabs rather. And I believe it's the same on all of the models. The flute, it's a green tab, and it'll be located in the same place as all of the others. Now watch what happens. This, this sound that you just heard becomes this. Now the trick to this is don't hold the notes. This is where you place the coddle because if you just tap the notes and raise your hand, it'll sustain the notes. Now you notice how what I'm doing with my hands. If you hold the notes down, it's then going to be a pipe organ sound with sustain. Doesn't sound nearly as good, or it doesn't sound as close to the bell sound, but watch. Now I have some people that really love this because they say they play choppy anyway. So this will make it look like they're not playing choppy. They're doing it on a purpose. Now watch this. So eight foot flute, no tremolo, no, um, and add sustain gives us this sound. Almost like a, it almost sounds like a vibraphone type setting. In fact, I think that's what they did years ago to try to create a vibraphone sound. But if you're playing holiday or Christmas tunes, all right. Now I'm going to come over and reach over and hit the two foot <coughs> flute. Eight foot and two foot flute. Sean, are you writing this stuff down? Uh, no, I was on the phone. I didn't know what I was supposed to write down because I got a phone call. Well, now you know. You're on. You're talking like 20 minutes. I don't know what to write down from that. The last thing that I just said. Oh. Turn, on the, turn on the organ. Okay. Turn off Viber trim and add sustain. <laughs> there, there is, I summed it up. And then you get, now here's the eight foot and the two foot with sustain. I'll probably remember everything I did today though. 
Oh, it's a little different. So pretty cool, huh? Now, I have the one foot flute over here, so I'm going to come over here and do the exact same setting for those of you who have the one foot flute. So I'm going to turn off everything and turn on the eight foot flute, all right, and the two foot, so it's just sound very similar to what we just did. Oh, sustain, sustain, sustain. Here we go. All right, now watch what happens when I turn the two off. And I'm going to put just the eight foot and the one foot flute. Now, there's a, there's a, this, this is kind of a little bit of a, uh, just a FYI. If you decide that you want to do some of these settings and you want to put them into action with a rhythm or you want to play some chords, Keep in mind, if you notice, they're very soft. They're not really strong and full. So it may take a little bit of adjusting. Like if I want to play a chord now in my left hand, I might have to turn down the left hand. If I put on the rhythm, I might have to turn down the rhythm a little bit. So that way the melody doesn't get lost. Okay? Here's one more. <clears throat> so I gave you an eight-foot flute that to me almost sounded like the vibraphone. I think that was the, the trick back in the day. An eight foot and a two foot flute. I see Sean typing away now. His hands are just moving on the typewriter. Uh, these are all, by the way, with sustain, no tremolo. And then here I did an eight foot and a one foot flute. Now, here's one. I think this is it. Let's see if it works. Are you ready? It almost has a chime-like effect. Would you like to know how I did that? Come back next week. I'm going to finish that. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> this is what they used to do to create chime effects. Eight foot, five and a third, and a four foot flute. Now, if you have an organ that has flute tabs on it, which if you have the marquees and the arias, whatever you do, even the uh, top of the line A series, and even some of the mid-range instruments have the five and a third. You all have the eight and the four. And you get the chime effect. And my last one is, if you want a music box, like the, the music box dancer, is that the song? You just put a four-foot flute on, and this is what you get. Four-foot flute by itself. Wasn't that just so cute? <laughs> All right. Now, I will tell you this. Sean has been boasting to me about teaching a class on the flute tabs and doing a whole class on a bunch of other stuff we can do with this. So stay tuned in. Right, Sean? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So before I go on to segment two, does anybody have any questions? Raise your hands. Speak now or forever hold your... Peace. Well, it's not that bad. <clears throat> Looks like Jan has a question. Jan, okay. Go yeah, ahead. Rob, uh, Robert, on the, when you're creating the chime and the music box, is the sustain still on? Sustain is on on every example that I've given you today. Just, okay. and, and just to reiterate, turn on the organ. It comes up to the organ sound anyway. Turn off the vibra trim, add flute sustain, and then... In fact, you can experiment with any combination you want. And you just remember, if you're using the sustain to create bell-like type sounds or what have you, strike the note. Don't hold the note. Because the minute you hold the note, it now is playing an organ sound with sustain. Okay? <clears throat> Carolyn? 
Yes, um, Robert, you play mostly on the top keyboard for the um, bells. What I happens? Did. And I did, and the reason why I did that is because I wanted you to just hear it. The okay. But keep in mind what I just said. If you decide to play these with a style or you're playing, like when I did the chimes, I actually went over and I played the left-hand chord. Because those, th these effects are relatively soft in the melody, right. you're going to have to turn down, the, in this case, when I had the chimes on, I had to turn down my lower and I turned down the bass. If you're using a rhythm with it, you're gonna, you might have to, you'll find yourself turning down the orchestra plus. You may have to turn some stuff down, if you will, to hear it. Sometimes I like doing these effects without a rhythm, and then all you have to do is adjust the uh, left hand chord and the bass. Judy? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Judy, you have a question? You have to, have to unmute. unmute. Go ahead and click on mute. There Did you, you press go. any preset button? You lose everything you've done. <laughs> so okay. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> touch a preset. That that's what it does is it sets it up for the next setting. Okay. Now, in this instance, if I accidentally hit a preset like this, and if I turn off that preset, it goes back. Now, if I start doing some other setups, it may not be that simple. So if you find something that you truly, really like, and you come across in your experimentation, save it on a preset. All right? Okay, any other questions? All right. Now, this is the part that I'm nervous about because I've got to come up with some settings for these. Let's see here. So we have um, sleigh ride, please. You want to go on, on a sleigh ride? You live in Florida. That may not work very well, Carol. But if you'd like um, a setting for that, one of the most classic settings that most people use for sleigh ride. Sean, where are you? There you are. Type this stuff down. OK. All right, sleigh ride, the most common setup that most people use is the style simply called sleigh bells. All right, so let me come back over here. I have a big TV on this cart, so I'm always nervous that I'm going to knock it over on me here. Pardon me. Is that view okay? <coughs> okay. Yes. So sleigh, sleigh bells is a very common one. Just simply hit Broadway um, category, sleigh bells. Um, if you just start off with a vintage, you get something, something as simple as this. Now, don't ask me to play the rest of it because that part's not that easy. I think I seen Joni pull it off, right? You play that song, don't you, Joni? Yeah, show off. And notice when, if you're looking at her, she's smiling like, <laughs> <laughs> these pros. That's, um, actually, that's actually very difficult, that bridge. It is an extremely difficult part, but I play it all. What I do is I just play that over and over and over, and then I'll switch to another song and make it look like I'm purposely doing a medley. All right, which you can do because if you're doing that style, and it works great going right into Jingle Bells. All right, let's see. Frosty, you know, <coughs> Frosty. Okay, you know, Frosty the Snowman, that's a great, there's, so many ways you can do Frosty the Snowman. A song like Frosty is great because 
If you love country music, you can do a country. If you love big band music, you can do a big man. Um, I sometimes will put on, uh, you know, the Chicago Swing. Sometimes I even go country. Let's see here. Here's one. Let's see if you can guess the name of this style. I feel like I should have a beer in my hand. Hey! Anybody know what that style is? I know Joni knows it. <laughs> Honky Any... tonk. No, close. Sounds like it. It's a style called rinky tink. You all have it. It's a fun style. Um, and the other one I like to use, I'm going to use my style list feature here because I don't know where it's at on here, but I'm going to go to the R's. And this is really cool. Now, Frosty's a tricky one for me because sometimes I'll be playing it and I'll accidentally start playing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer because they're very similar in the chord changes. I do that. <clears throat> I, all the time. By I, accident. <laughs> it's that middle part of the song. But anyway, yeah. but I'll sometimes do a medley of Frosty and Rudolph with, uh, I forgot what I was looking for. Okay, Razzmatazz. So that was Razzmatazz. The first one was Chicago Swing. Second one was Rinky Tink. And then the last one was Razzmatazz. And then I threw in Frosty and uh, Road Off the Red Nose Reindeer together. <clears throat> now here's one um, White Christmas. I tell you what I like about White Christmas is going back to the flute settings. What I probably would recommend, well, there's so many recommendations for White Christmas, so it just, it's kind of pick one and see which one you like the most. But sometimes what I'll do is I'll find like a San Fran style. So let me go to the style list. And go to San Fran's. Another one that I use sometimes, by the way, let me actually show you this one first, is... The, as, as it's in here, let's see if they have it. Theater Romance. Okay, they do. So Theater Romance, just vintage style setup, and you get this really gorgeous theater sound. But with a nice vocal sounding.
Now, sometimes another style, if you want to have a little bit more of that uh, standard kind of a feel, San Fran's is commonly a style that's used. Um, so I'm going to use San Fran's, dinner and dance, those styles. But what I like to do is take the organ flutes and put just a 16 and an 8-foot flute setting. So you could do this a couple ways. If you just put on general preset, turn off the vintage after you get it set up, put on general preset 1, general preset, okay? So not the bank or the category. And general preset 1 gives you a 16, 8, and a 4-foot organ sound, okay? That's nice. But what I'll do is turn off the 4-foot flute and use just the 16 and the 8. Now, some of you actually have a tab called Mellow Organ. So if you have that, that works well too. All right? And then what I'll do is add a harmony of choice. Now, that harmony could be as simple as an AOC or four-part harmony. So I'm going to just put it on AOC. And then the last thing I'll do on some of the models, you have a, what's called a, uh, a flute chorus. I don't know if it's on the Rialto, but it's definitely on the marquee um, and the aria where those vibratrems are. There's a, there's a tab that says flute chorus. It just gives it a nice little stereo effect to it. But watch. I have 16 and 8-foot flute with a harmony using San Franz. Now, the tempo is, is up to you. This comes up pretty slow. I might adjust it. Oh, I got to put the rhythm on with the background. Here we go. Okay. I'll probably speed it up to 80. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I don't want that piano player playing. I mean, sometimes piano players, they just, they just want to be noticed all the time. Like, hey, look, I'm here. Okay, stop it, piano player. So I'm going to turn off the Orchestra Plus. So now all I have is a drummer a guitar player, and obviously the bass. Now watch what happens when we put just the introduction on. Either introduction works fine. I'm going to try number two, see how that works. I'm going to take it a step further, and I'm going to transpose it down, because I like playing up here. I'm going to transpose it down to the key of A, and give it a nice little warmer tone to it. Here we go. Pretty. So, so it's a really. This is one of those songs that you can jazz it up a little bit. You can make it a little more smooth. That theater romance works nicely with it. For those of you who have the what uh, marquee, grand marquee and aria, you have a special style on there that you probably know about already. If you don't, make note. Um, and it was. I want to say a group called the Drifters. Is it the Drifters, Sean? Yep. They had a, a version of White Christmas, and it was, uh, most people know it, it was featured in uh, the movie Home Alone. And I believe the scene is the little boy shaving. Home Alone 1, the first one, he's shaving. And in the background, there's, you know, there's always music playing. It's their version of White Christmas and doo-wop delight. 
um, is the style that they use uh, on the marquee that's designed for that. And believe it or not, on that song, um, just a little extra, let me look it up for you. For the song, White Christmas, using Doo-Wop Delight, if you want it in the actual key that they sang it in, I looked it up on YouTube and I matched it to the organ. The key that they play it in, because the music's in the key of C, so it's easy, transpose it down to A flat. And you'll be playing in an exact key that they sang it in, at least on the YouTube recording that I heard of them. So it's really clever. And then the voices that come up automatically on the Duop Delight, because it comes up with um, the, the style setup zero, comes up with a vocal with harmony on the top keyboard, and then a vocal without harmony on the lower right keyboard. And the bottom one, the voice is really low, so it, it kind of matches one of the singer's voices. So Duop Delight, transpose down to A flat, style setup zero. I think Sean has that look like he's typing again. Is that the type? Is that what your typing look is? No, I was uh, uh, looking up pictures of Macaulay Culkin from Home Alone. <laughs> well, he was watching Home Alone this whole time. See, I got him inspired. So write that down, Sean, or type that down. So anyway, so that's another great one for you. Um, all right. <clears throat> I have um, – now, I'm not playing all the songs, by the way, because um, next week, I think next week, we're going to have a series of annual Christmas celebrations um, for all – we're going to have, like – we're going to try to do, like, five or six of them for different groups of students so we could try to keep be a more – more personalized and so forth. So stay tuned in, by the way. More to come. I just spilt the beans. The staff now, they didn't know about it yet, but now they do. Um, but I didn't play it all the way through because when we have the artists perform the songs, then you get to hear them all throughout this beautiful Christmas concert. But anyway, we'll talk more about that. Stay tuned in on the emails. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is a someone put in here um, uh, Silver Bells. Believe it or not, the style that I love to use with silver bells, I use many, but my favorite one is I'm going to go to style list, and then I'm going to show you something that I've done with that, and I'll, I'm going to try an attempt to show you how you can get the information if you don't have it already, because I've shared it with a lot of students over the years. But the style that I like to use is lullaby. And lullaby... Uh, just vintage, if you just put on lullaby, the lullaby actually has been around for years. It was introduced on the Larry Royale back in 2001. And it's under the Waltz 2 category, I believe. Yes. On here, it's under the three-quarter category. I searched for it by using the stylist feature. Okay. And if you just start off with just a vintage style setup or regular rhythm preset on the A series, this is what you get. And I'm going to keep it in the key of A just to see what it sounds like. Here we go.
What's that style called again? That style, did I tell you what it was? It's lullaby, wasn't it? It is, it is lullaby, is the style. I used simply on the E series models, EX, uh, Marquee, Grand Marquee, Aria, vintage style setup. All right, if you happen to be on today and you have an A series, same rhythm style, just rhythm preset because vintage is basically giving the, the setups from the A series. And it gives you that really pretty bell sound on the top keyboard. And believe it or not, on the bottom right keyboard, it sets up a smooth flute with a theremin. <clears throat> and I'll tell you about that in just a moment. And then as I was playing, when I wanted to switch over, did you notice um, when I was playing, we heard, let me pull up that style again. You probably heard this. Okay. In order to get that jingle jangle going with that style, you have to turn on the drum variation with altar style. And I see Sean diligently typing away. And that's all I did for that. Same two setups on the top and the bottom. Now, two, two things <clears throat> I'm going to show you. I did a uh, uh, couple months ago, I did a little bit of uh, a sneak peek of this. But I'm going to take that style. And what I did is I used it the same style for the, another great Christmas classic called What Child Is This? Now, when you hear the style as you heard it, it normally sounds like this. Okay, and it's, and it's just a gorgeous sound. If you do the minor chord, it's going to be a little differently. However, what I did is I took that and I took it a step further and I created a whole arrangement that I won't have time to go over today, but I'm going to give you a hand, I'm going to offer a handout for you. But what I did is that exact same thing, and this was the, the, the end result. And you'll notice the theremin on the bottom with the flute.
Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. Now, I'm going to show you a couple things on the screen here, and then I'm going to show you how you can, and I say potentially because some people can get it, some don't. But um, first of all, here are my notes, and I'm going to put it in the chat feature here in case you want to, if you have a computer. <clears throat> Do you all see that there? This is the um, a step by step version of how I did the setups. So everything you just heard there. And you'll notice the first step has the most stuff in it. And then as I play, all I do is I add something to it, OK? So you notice all I did is I set up Lullaby. And then I turned off this, and I turned that off, and I turned that off, and I turned that. I turned all these things off, and all I was left was the theremin, okay, and actually a flute combination with it. That's what comes up with the setup that I told you originally. And on the up keyboard, I have a pan flute, but I don't use that yet. And then as I play it, and I get to the next part, I play, and I add orchestra plus. That's it. Then as I play it, I add the bass. That's it. Then I got to number four, the drummer came in. That's it, you'll see where it says to play. And then all I do is add step-by-step -step little things to it, all right? Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post this on a, a site that I'm gonna share it with you, but before I do that, I'm going to see if I can put it in the chat here. Let's see, access my computer. And so if you happen to have a computer while I'm talking here, you'll be able to, what's today's date? Uh, the first, okay, I dated it. Product feature class, holiday edition. Holiday edition, what title is this? Okay, I'm gonna open that and put that in there. The other thing that I'm going to do is, um, is I'll give you, here's the song. You'll notice that there are some, there's some additional chord changes in here, what have you. And you'll notice that I have the presets for those. Now, the question is, is how do I get the presets and these notes? Okay. This is a trick because one thing, one thing that I've noticed over the years is Lowry's never made the files of these as simple to attach an email like a, a PDF, <laughs> okay? It's a little different. So a, a file, and I know some of you have from Dennis Oz and Marcos where they, they share the presets and setups, and some people can get, eventually get it, and some people just go, it's too much work. So I'm going to share this with you in, in hopes that it might be a little bit easier than what we normally have. And so what I'm going to do is, let me, excuse me, I've got my computer and this big TV. This TV is like a 50-inch TV, so my neck is, <laughs> I'm looking up at you guys and, okay, let me just go to this page here. Bear with me. I'm sorry. I'm going to pull this up and then share it with you. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is today's class and the materials and the song and the setups, if you can accomplish this, it's a little tricky at first. I will warn you. Um, so I don't want you to think it's something, oh, it's that simple. It's it made it seem like it's that easy. It's not. But accessing the site is easy. The site is patreon.com, let's see, um, Judy, Jan, can you see that, my mouse moving here? Okay, it's patreon.com slash French Music Centers. Now, it's going to ask you a couple things. You can either become a patriot or you can select follow. If you select follow, it will ask you to set up an account, just like being a YouTube. If you do that or if you have a Google account, you can sign up and there's no fee to do that. And then anytime something gets posted, you can go to the site, it'll notify you, or you could just check it regularly, all right? And what's gonna happen is, like right here, you'll notice, let's see, recent posts. 
All right, so here, for example, is the class that Don did for these groups of students yesterday. You'll see that there's a little handout there. If you click on it, you have to sign up in order to get it. All right, but that's okay. It's like signing up for Facebook. Becoming a patron is optional. So every now and then I'll put handouts here, and then I'm going to also attach the song and the presets for both the A and the E series, and you can download it, fingers crossed. <laughs> and if, and if, it, if you're successful, what will happen is that the presets will be downloaded to your computer, and then you just have to get it from the computer to your USB. Now, that's a little something that I keep uh, threatening <laughs> Sean <laughs> that we're going to teach a class on how to do that stuff down the road because it's a little, it's not that simple. I will tell you for some people who aren't, quote, computer savvy, all right? But I will post the handout. The handout's easy. You just click download it and you open it up and it'll have the notes. So I'm going to try to give it to you as many different ways as possible. Now, having said that, I'm going to finish up with one upbeat song. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And actually, let's see here. I'm going to use the setups that I did earlier when I did Winter Wonderland. I used the Frank and the Count style. Let me just get that swinging holiday presets. I'll put these up there too if you want them. And I did Winter Wonderland. Uh, set up, set up, set up, set up. Okay. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play another just a great, fun, upbeat holiday tune for you. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I use before I play. Okay, so I don't have to do it at the end. Um, but when I opened up the class today, I opened up with um, uh, Winter Wonderland. And I said I used the Frank and the Count, and I did it at uh, 115. You can still do it at 115. You can, uh, whatever tempo is perfect for you, okay? I'm going to use the same setups. I have the piano. I have the jazz guitar. There's going to be a saxophone in there. There's going to be, um, well, I don't know what else is going to be in there. A, a nice, good old-fashioned, what I call the Dennis All organ sound. And Dennis All, if, you have, if any of you have seen Dennis All in his, in, in your tra in his travels, he was known to have, uh, let me give you this easy version of this. You ready? You put on all the flute tabs that you have, put on the jazz setting, and then in your genius or your um, sound button, find the, the organ B2 or B or just B. That's kind, of their, their, that's kind of their way of saying the Hammond organ B type sound. All right? That's what it was supposed to sound like. You'll hear it at some point, You'll, and, it's, and it's just a big organ sound. And the other little trick that he did is he added some strings with it. Okay? So, that's what I'm going to close off with, that sound for Santa Claus is coming to town because I heard, uh, I've been emailing Santa. You don't have to write him letters anymore, he said. Um, there's a lot more people in the world nowadays, and many of them are stuck at home. So he's getting inundated by uh, mail, and he's saying it's a little easier to do it by email. Um, and he's got uh, elves that can track all of this. And he told me that everybody that was attending today, now I don't know how he knows this. He is truly magical. Somehow he predicted everyone that was going to attend today, and he said you were all nice. Um, so we thought uh, we'd pay a little tribute to him, and um, uh, maybe he'll come by and drop off something nice in your doorstep. Or, you know, sometimes I know some of you have an aria, but um, sometimes it's nice to have a left hand and right hand model. Uh, or you could do like some students I've met before. They um, they get up in the middle. Of, you ever get up in the middle of the night, can't sleep? And just some people say they get up and they just go play the organ. I had a student that actually, his organ was in the other side of the house, so he bought a small, one of the small easy models and put it next to his bed. <laughs> so and when he got up, all he had to do was kind of roll over <laughs> and start playing. <laughs> True story. And Lona, he was a student from Tucson. I'll tell you who, you probably know who he was. Um, 
Uh, I'll, sh I'll tell you who that is sometime. I don't want to blast it all and embarrass him. So if he happens to be on today. Um, but anyway, so Santa Claus is coming to town. Before I depart, does anybody have any questions? I see a hand raised. Sue, <clears throat> is your hand raised for a question? Okay. Anyone? Okay, Ruth? Yes. You said something about a website you go to, patron something? Yeah, it's called, it's called uh, let me spell it for you. It's P okay, P-A-T-R-E-O-N yeah. dot com slash Fletcher Music Centers. Thank you. Yeah. Now, just so you know, that, uh, that website does encourage people to be a patron, to donate stuff, um, which we're okay with. But I'm also doing that for a lot of reasons. There's something, some content that I'm doing just for members, because you guys are lifetime members. And we want people that, um, if they're not a member, in other words, they haven't bought an organ yet, that they have to do, go to a little bit more trouble to get the stuff like you're getting live. So that's why I, lo I post a lot of those content on there. Um, the, other, the other thing to that is it's allowing me to put some handouts and things that I can't typically do on, say, YouTube, all right, because there's a lot of different rules with that. Um, but that's the website. Um, anyway, so I'm going to finish off with Santa Claus is coming to town, and um, hopefully you've all been nice. He, he emailed me back this morning. In fact, I just got an email just a minute ago, and he, he did the thumbs up emoji and that everybody here was nice. So we'll finish off with a little Santa Claus is coming to town. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed today's class. And Thanks, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert.
And then keep an eye out because we're going to start doing things on that site that you normally won't get anywhere. I'm working behind oh. it. That's all I can tell you for now. No more. No more information. You have to get out of me. All right. Well, thank you. Happy holidays. Oh, my goodness. Oh, here's a scene from Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <poor kid. laughs> oh, of course, you can always count on Sean. He'll go away for a little while and then he sneaks up on you. By the way, that wasn't really the kid from Home Alone. That was Sean when he was about seven years old. <laughs> Last year. Actually, that kind of looks like him now. He's got that look that he's always right? That's why he grew the beard. <laughs> anyway, uh, you. stay safe, keep playing music, and mwah. Mwah. Mwah.